Here we go. Okay, hi. Today I'm doing um, my presentation on rabbit breeding. Uh, I was a rabbit, well, this is the reason why I was doing it. So um, I was a rabbit breeder for like six years through high school and middle school. I had my own little rabbitry and I sold bunnies all across the country. I would like uh, I would ship them out to people. Well, I didn't like to fly my rabbits, but I had like tap. They have pet taxi services that you can utilize, and so I would utilize those to ship my animals all over the country. Um, this is the main breed I raised right here, which is an English Law. I got. I did really well in them with this breed when I was younger, and then these two are Velveteen Lobs, which are something that I raised. Um, I started raising during high school when I got on a project that was to help create this breed. There's still a lot of people working on that project, but I think pretty soon there'll be an official breed, so that's really exciting. This is an adult one, and this is a baby one, it's really cute, so just in case anyone wanted to see those. Oh, and I also had a little bit of experience in raising silver martins in New Zealand on the side because if you raise rabbits, you might as well have like some meat rabbits while you're at it. So um, this is basically what to look for when you're breeding. Um, before you're breeding, you're always going to want to examine the animal. So this is just like a basic what you're checking for, but basically just the overall health of the animal and see if there's no reproductive problems. Bunnies are really known for getting ovarian cancer and stuff like that. So just like palpating that area and checking for anything like that or just any health issues in general because you really don't need to be breeding a rabbit that has health issues. The same for the buck, especially if it's his first time um, breeding. They have, which you should probably figure this out way before breeding, but just in case you don't. Um, one thing that's kind of common in bucks is they have something that's called a split penis, which is sometimes where like it's, their penis itself is like split in half, and I guess it's like a very painful disease so, or disorder. So usually those bucks, if it's like from a breeder, they usually end up euthanizing that animal or um, you might be able to figure out some treatments with your vet if it's a pet um, and just overall like health in general like if a doe isn't producing good milk in the past I probably wouldn't use it for breeding again or just some genetic traits that are passed down like um, there's something called pigeon breast in rabbits which occurs in other animals but it's where the rib cage is kind of pushed out and like pointy and it can constrict their heart and stuff like that so those type of rabbits it would just be good to um, not breed because it's genetic and it will end their life sooner than it should be and then uh, also just looking for confirmation of the animal so you want an animal that has like splayed hind feet that kind of make a V shape probably doesn't have the best confirmation especially if you're looking for like a meat rabbit and probably will have problems in the hindquarters of its body if you're showing those animals it won't necessarily hurt them but I would just if I had an animal that had like splayed back feet I probably wouldn't breed them um, and just in general um, usually a good time to sense when like it might be a good time to breed a doe is you can check her vulva and it will be more of a deepish reddish purplish color instead of like a pinky white so that can be an indication that it's a good time um, during breeding, um, the buck will mount the doe from behind, so that's usually a telltale sign that things are in action. And then before breeding, um, sometimes the doe, if she wants, it is receptive to the male, she'll, she'll position herself, which just means kind of stay still and put her tail up in the air to so kind of signal to the buck like, hey, I want to breed. And it's usually just like as a breeder you can also kind of tell it's like this doe will probably be more receptive because she is presenting i'm not sure if that's the official word for it a lot of the word terminology used for rabbits isn't really standardized because there's like three places that you'll really get information from and one is the american rabbit breeders association but they're not um control they're not they don't have any like relationships as much like with extension offices like other animals do like in the dairy and cattle industry and even horses they have relationships with like big like agriculture colleges to like do research and stuff like that but with rabbits there's not a lot of that and then there's also something called the house buying society which they're more of um, pet breeders and stuff like that they don't believe in breeding 
they believe in rescuing rabbits and they do have good information but there's some differences in the information you'll get between those so just like know what you're reading when you're reading it and then there's also I think um, the Institutional Animal Use and Care Committee for research they sometimes have some regulations that you have to follow if you're using animals in a federally funded research program so those are all places you might find information from if you're searching online. Um, so these are breeding methods and again like these aren't actually these are like what I'm calling these things because there's not like proper terminology for it but like I think this is like the most straightforward terminology you could really come up with. So this is generally what most like lab places I would assume do um, which is cage breeding so they usually put the doe into the buck's cage. They bring the doe to the buck's cage because does tend to be more territorial over their territory. So there's like an, a there's like more of a potential hazard putting a buck in a doe's cage that she'll attack him. Um, so one of the pros of this is you have more time for breeding. A lot of people don't leave them in 48 hours, but I've heard like some breeders being like, yeah, I just leave my bunnies together in the same cage for a week and that's how I breed my rabbits. I um, I think whatever works for you, I guess if it works for you, keep doing it. But I think it's better to be able to regulate the breeding and watch it happening just to make sure that the rabbits aren't getting too aggressive with each other or the does not getting too stressed out because they can bite each other and pull hair and you don't I think the animal safety is the number one thing, and so being able to view and supervise it, I think it's a very important thing, but then again, if this is if you've been leaving rabbits together and not watching the breeding happen all throughout, that's your personal choice. Just know the pros and cons to it. Um, yeah, so you can't, you basically just can't interfere, and you also, if you're leaving them in for longer periods of time, you can't confirm that the buck is finished and so you don't know exactly if your doe has been bred. Um, this is generally what I see most breeders do, which is table breeding. Um, usually most bucks are really good at finishing very fast and so you can get your doe bred multiple times but you have some that just are like not good breeders and like it's kind of questionable like do you want to keep continue keeping them around or is it like a behavioral thing that you might be able to fix? Um, but table breeding is usually what is most preferred because they're right there in front of you. They usually have like these tables, like most breeders have these like carpeted tables that they keep the rabbit on so they can pose them and look at them. And people will usually position their dough and let their buck finish one to three times within a 30 minute period. Um, I think it's a good way because again, you can intervene very directly if, um, there is issues and one of the rabbits is being too stressed out. Um, but the downside of it is if you have a buck that is not a very good breeder, you could spend hours there trying to get the buck to finish and actually breed your doe. Um, and this is a method I kind of use because I guess I kind of had a more like flowy free environment, but I um, had a lot of play pins for my bunnies. And so um, I also raised animals with big ears and they were large rabbits, so it was hard to find a table to accommodate them. But I guess some people, like, you could, if some people breed them in a certain room in their house or like an enclosed area, like a bathroom, I guess that could fall into this area. Um, but you basically <coughs> place the rabbits you want to breed in an enclosed pen. The pen that I used was a pen that both the rabbits were used to playing in, so it was an area that they were comfortable in because I usually, um, would have my bunnies out of their cage. Like, I had them on a playtime schedule. I just like to exercise my rabbits because I, felt, I feel like it makes them happier. So since I could do it, I did. Um, I would generally just do some yard work or sit right by the cage in case I needed to intervene. And I would let them be there from anywhere between like 30 minutes to like five hours. And a lot of the time, like they're not gonna breathe like the whole like five hours, but they enjoy being to sit out in the sun, so you know it's not going to hurt them. Either way, the nice part is, is you can um, position the animals and intervene if necessary. And I can kind of monitor from a distance, so like kind of like if your kids are playing outside and you see them on the swing set, kind of like one of those case scenarios. Um, 
and it allows the rabbits space. So if you have a breed that is bigger, or for example, I had English Lops, and so one thing I was always really afraid of is biting, like one of them biting another one's ear, and like the drama of everything going on. Because when they bite the ear, it doesn't like sometimes like Nick's won't fully grow back, and then if it was a buck that I was still showing, that would be like a sometimes a disqualification, no matter how big it was. So. That was something that I was concerned about, so allowing ample space was tended to be really good for me. And the um, con of this method is um, you have to have a space available. You might have to invest in a pen, and um, the rabbits might get too focused on the surrounding and not actually breed like they're supposed to, or you might get distracted and not be able to supervise as much. But you know, just figure out what works with you for you. These are all great methods. They all get the same thing done. Um, so this is the rabbit uterus and ovulation. So this picture was like a really simple picture I thought to explain it, but they also had the opossum in here, which I don't really know. They're marsupials, so I was really shocked to see that they had the same uterus type, but the mouse and the rabbit um, have the same uter have the same uterus type. And online, if you search like, rabbit uteruses, a lot of places will say rabbits have two uteruses. That's false, rabbits have one uterus, but it has two um, body horns and two, cervix two cervixes. I've never had to say that word in plural. Um, and it also has no um, uterine body. So all the babies grow within these uterine horns. Um, the opossum, if you're wondering, is the same thing, but for some reason they have two vaginas as well that lead into a separate uterine horn and cervix. So that's kind of some cool information. I don't know a lot about opossums, but there's a lot of information online. Um, so rabbits are something called induced ovulators. So basically when they're bred or they're stim like sexually stimulated, they will ovulate. So they don't have like cycles generally like most um, animals do. Um, sometimes the animals can be induced by just another rat, like rabbits will hump each other for dominance, and so like two male rabbits will hump each other and two female rabbits will hump each other to insert dominance, and sometimes that can stimulate ovulation, like another female humping another female for dominance could stimulate the ovulation in the female that's like being humped and then you can that can sometimes lead to false pregnancies too because they have this like induced ovulation but no fertilization and um, ovulation generally occurs 10 to 13 hours after mating so generally like they you'll breed multiple times in a 30 minute period just to increase your chances of taking and then um, i found this online which i thought was very interesting but they um, can be receptive for fertilization after inducing ovulation for five to 14 days. So the cycles, I guess, are very variable between rabbits. Okay, so once you have your doe bred, uh, the does will nest. So there's materials that you might need, um, which is a nesting box, as they generally are just like a little box that the rabbit can jump in and out, which is basically like a little cradle for her babies and they'll put a whole bunch of materials in there. Generally, this is one of the behaviors that will go with the nesting box is the doe pulling hair from her stomach and inserting it in the nesting box. They also pick up like hay or sometimes if you like have a washcloth sitting around or like some paper towels, they'll like shrug that up and put it in there. So just anything she feels like would be a good nesting material. Sometimes it's like really random or like some, they'll get like a hold of some piece of cardboard and you're like, I don't even know how you did that, but it'll end up there. Um, a quiet space, especially for first time mothers. So you, if you have a rabbit that's having babies in the wild, rabbits, if they feel threatened, will sometimes kill their babies as a way of like survival. And I think like a lot of smaller animals actually do that. But just since that's like kind of a I think like an instinctual nature, removing your rabbits from the rabbit barn and putting them in a quiet space, maybe covering the cage with a towel or something. So it's a nice quiet space, she can't smell other bunnies, they're not threatening her, will probably just make it an overall more pleasurable experience for the mother and it 
would probably protect the babies, which have weak immune systems from being introduced to like the whole herd. Um, oh yeah, so another thing is you may see when they're building their nests, they sometimes will like to burrow more. So you'll see them kind of like dig around more and looking for stuff. And in the wild, that's something they would do to build their nests is they would burrow and dig. And when we put them in nesting boxes, they don't really have too much to dig in unless except like bedding depending on the type of cage that you have so either way like they enjoy digging so that's just some natural behavior you'll see them do which is normal and healthy um, so caging for breeding um, I think is a very important thing so a bigger cage may need, be needed to accommodate a large litter size overall so if you normally have your doe in like a cage that's like 24 by 24 you might upgrade them to a cage it's like 24 by 36 so just something a little bit bigger um, I have some pictures of cages on the next slide so this is like a typical wire cage that you see a lot of breeders using and generally they'll have these little pads or resting plates around the cage for the rabbits aren't always standing on wire um, which is a really typical, and this is more like a pet style cage. A lot of breeders don't have a whole bunch of these because they're a lot harder to clean. Uh, but I, for babies, I recommend getting, I'm not saying that if you're using this, it's not okay. But for me, I've had um, babies get hurt on wire cages before. So like I had, um, I think I was using a wire cage when they got a little bit older, but I had one whose like little foot was so tiny, it got it stuck under like in a wire and actually ended up breaking its hind foot, which was really, really sad because um, I just felt horrible the whole time. But I think overall, like you can, this one has guards on it, which helps a lot, which they're mainly for pee. So like if the rabbit pees on like at the side of the cage, it's not like splashing out, but can also help protect babies. So if you're, if you have a wire cage and there's nothing else you can use, investing in some guards would probably be a really good thing. But for babies, um, or kits or when a mother's having babies. I prefer cages like this because there's a big bottom. I know that the babies aren't gonna fall out or anything like that and um, she can dig in there because there's bedding so it kind of encourages that natural behavior. So I just like having these a little bit more all over for my babies. They are a little bit harder to clean so if you have a lot of rabbits, you know, it's something to consider. I've also had um, somehow i once had a cage that was like similar to this one and somehow like the mom was a first time mom and she ended up freaking out and she pushed all the babies outside of the cage like through the wire and i ended up finding them and like warming them up before like they were like i don't know too cold and like giving them back i like switched her cages and gave them back to her and she ended up being like a good mom but she had like a freak like a freak out moment like right at her like first birth and but every litter after that, she was a great mother. Um, so, did the dough take? So you're gonna wanna palpate your dough. Usually you do this about two weeks after you breed, so about 14 days of pregnancy. Um, so there's different rabbit holding methods, which if I went into all of those, it would probably take way too much time. But generally, um, you can tuck, you can flip the dough onto her stomach, so kind of like a lateral view. There's different ways you can do that. A lot of times when I do that, I will stick my rabbit's head like underneath my armpit kind of and hold them close to my body while I'm sitting in a chair. So then their kind of behind area is exposed to me turned upside down. And when you tilt their head back a little bit, the blood rushes to their head. So it kind of, um, kind of like similar in chickens, like when you hold a chicken upside down, but it's not exactly the same. It kind of like, relaxes them a little bit so you're able to do stuff like cut their nails and stuff like that so you can um, flip them over and then you'll use two to three fingers I think sometimes if you're using your whole hand it's kind of hard to feel for those things so kind of just like a pinching mechanism or just like feeling mechanism at first you'll um, find the abdomen and kind of where you think the uterus is which is generally like the lower stomach area and you'll kind of apply like a gentle but like steady pressure and you'll be feeling for kind of like a grape size structure and those in there and that's usually the embryo and it kind of feels like a little nodule it's not like super hard but it's also it's like kind of like a hard squishy 
nodule. Um, so something I talked about this a little earlier is false pregnancy. And so generally it's does explain nesting behaviors and pregnancy-like symptoms without being pregnant. Um, it's usually caused when a doe is induced to ovulate but doesn't take. So then sometimes it will um, cause them to, like, to produce progesterone. And in fake pre pregnancies, sometimes they'll even gain weight like they were if they were pregnant because they like legitimately think that they are. And I think the hormones playing into it are what mainly cause them to gain the weight like they would normally. Um, so, I mean, things that can induce a rabbit to ovulate are the proximity of other males or sometimes birthing females. So like if you have like male who's like spraying a lot or something like that, like sometimes she doesn't have to be mounted and for some reason that can induce them to ovulate. And I, I'm not sure on this, but like I think like other females birthing around them well, sometimes like rabbits are really sensitive to pheromones and stuff like that so sensing a lot of other animals that have been breeding in the environment previously and like when you're like having like these seasons where you're having a whole bunch of litters being born and stuff like that sometimes you'll see like other female rabbits being like thrown into like a fake pregnancy um, so a solution is um, sometimes you just wait it out and the behavior will pass on its own after her reproductive cycle runs its course and um, sets back to normal. Um, if you have a pet rabbit or basically a pet rabbit because usually a show rabbit or a breeding rabbit you can't spay. So like if you have a pet rabbit a good option might be spaying the female pet rabbit. Um, even a spayed female sometimes can produce have false pregnancies and a lot of times um, pet owners have their rabbits in co-living environments so when your rabbit is in a co-living environment, that's perfectly fine if you've done the proper introduction for your rabbits. Um, they are social animals, but sometimes their reproductive behaviors can make them fight each other. But generally, when you have two pet rabbits, you generally spay and neuter them, or at least have one spayed and neutered. So um, if another rabbit, they a lot of times, even if they're spayed and neutered, will still sometimes mount each other for dominance. So if you have one being mounted all the time, that can throw them into um, their like ovulation and it could cause them to have a fake pregnancy and many fake pregnancies over and over and over again can be stressful on an animal because each time they're pulling hair and like distributing all these behaviors and then I think them not having babies will sometimes cause them to go a little crazy. So sometimes you'll have this like in the cycle of just false pregnancies after false pregnancies after false pregnancies if you have a pet rabbit and you keep experiencing this, contact your vet. Um, if you're a breeder, um, sometimes just breeding your doe that keeps having false pregnancies is a really good option. Now, after she has a litter, it ends it and it's really good. And generally, if it's a rabbit that has false pregnancies a lot, they like being pregnant. So, you know, they're like a type of doe where you could get three litters a year out of and like that doe wants that kind of in a way. Um, but if you keep having problems with it, even as a breeder, contacting your vet is always a good option. Okay, so these are um, cases of multiple sires. I've had this happen once, and I thought it was like really interesting, and I like looked it up online a lot, but it's really hard to find what these terms are, and they do exist in people too, and other animals but just they're co more common in rabbits because they can, be they can be considered continuous ovulators because they can be induced to ovulate, whereas some species like mice continually ovulate all the time. Um, so super fetitation, I think, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, is the occurrence of multiple stages of developing offspring in the same animal. So it's basically, um, you have two litters at once, but they're of different ages. They're com as I said already, they're common in animals that have continuous ovulation. Um, generally, when I looked online, there was uh, so many cases of people, like rabbit breeders, saying like, oh, my rabbit had another litter two weeks after she had another litter. I think part of it has to do with they do have two uterine horns. So that's kind of a helpful thing because you can grow two different litters at once. But then again, you don't have to have two uterine horns for this to happen. And generally, um, what happens is you have, um, 
They can remain receptive to fertilization for up to a couple of weeks, but since they have two ovaries, sometimes when they're pregnant, they have like another um, cycle where they like release eggs. And then if they're bred in that time period, it can fertilize those eggs and they'll have two litters. Um, I've heard some people say online that they were afraid that if it was pregnant with two litters that they'd have all the babies at once. But I've seen some people have just like another litter born two weeks later. So that's another reason why I think even though this isn't super likely, it is more like it is more common in animals like rabbits. I think it's another reason why monitoring your breeding is important. Um, because you don't want to like risk something like that. You want to like know who's breeding your animal and when. It creates a management issue at that point because if you have a mom nursing two litters, there's a lack of milk to go around to everyone. and There's a chance that these bigger rabbits would trample the younger ones. So generally, if you had a situation like that, um, cross fostering, which people do in rabbits, kind of similar to swine, I would recommend cross fostering if that's an option and if not um, at least supplementing to help feed a little bit of more milk to everyone so they get nutrients but when you have to supplement it's just never going to be as good as mom's milk um, so this is called heteropaternal super feed fecundation fecundation and so super fecundation is actually what's responsible for um, paternal twins, but it would be homo paternal. And so basically it's called super ovulation is when you ovulate more than like your normal amount of eggs. So in humans, if you super ovulated, you would ovulate two eggs instead of one, which a normal female in her reproductive cycle would ovulate. And then um, at the time of conception, since there's two eggs, two eggs get fertilized by like the same person but um, sperm can last in a reproductive tract for, I'm not sure like the exact date, but I think it's like a couple weeks, isn't it? Like, for rabbits, are you saying, or for human, humans? I think it's a relatively the same in general, okay. but like... Um, Usually not that long, but... Is it, like, I don't know how long it lasts, but I know, it's, isn't it like a couple days? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, not two weeks, but like at least like a couple days. Mm -hmm. So like, um, if you had... Um, if you were exposed to two males within that time period. So like rabbits mate very, very fast and very continuously. And like there's a lot of times like two in the wild, maybe like two bucks competing for a doe. So like a lot of times like you'll see this in like pet owners, which this is the case that I had because when I was little, before I started breeding bunnies, I had like a lot of pet bunnies. And um, I got them from a rescue group and they were like, these rabbits are all spayed. And so, like, my mom was like, oh, this is perfect, her first pet. And so, like, then, like, my neighbors gave me a whole bunch of bunnies because they're just like, this kid loves bunnies. So, of course, like, mm -hmm. I, like, would let all my bunnies, like, play together. And I would, like, love it every day. So the female rabbits I got from the rescue group were not spayed, like they said. And, like, when I was young, I guess I didn't have the knowledge to really, like, know what that meant exactly. So I ended up having... Um, the doe I had at the time bred by two males in the same time period and she had a litter of four and two of the babies were from one dad and two of the babies were from another dad which was really cool I think because they were like half siblings. This can happen in people but um, it's not as common. It's like a very rare situation because then again super ovulating in people isn't very common and like being exposed to two males in that time period isn't as likely as it would be with like animals. But um, it is a thing that exists, so that's interesting, at least to me. And basically it's the same thing in homo paternal, but it's the only difference is it's just like the same male we're being exposed to. Okay, so this is um, sexing kits. Um, so Basically, this is, their anatomy matures way beyond this as they get older, but when you're sexing when they're younger, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, so it's done between five to eight weeks. Um, if you're pretty good at it, you can do it at four weeks. I wouldn't even, like, maybe some people can do it at three weeks, but, like, at that point, like, 
I don't really see the point of doing it at three weeks because they're so tiny and it would probably stress them out. So you hold their, um, your rabbit ventrically with the belly side up, similar like I said before. You can tuck their head under the armpit. You can wrap Okay, so um, rabbits are capable of reproducing at four months old. You probably don't want to breed your rabbit just at four months old. Generally, you want to wait um, till their bodies are mature enough to know that they like reached like even though they can breed, it doesn't mean they should be because you want to make sure their bodies are big enough to be able to handle a litter and support those growing babies. So generally, they come into sexual maturity. Um, they usually stay at six months and larger breeds, usually they say eight months, but there's a little bit of a um, like variance in the time frame just for general rabbits and general rabbits have a little bit of a variance even in their breed. So for your smaller breeds, for the does, you can see that happening. If it happens a little bit early at five months, all the way to seven months. And bucks usually come into sexual maturity a little bit earlier. So for that small buck, you'll see him coming into sexual maturity at four to six months. Um, large does, um, I think like eight to 11 months, they usually come into sexual maturity at the latest, but I think it's just because they have a, such a larger size and more to develop in general. Um, a lot of breeders like to breed a large doe right at eight months because I've seen a lot of people wanting their, um, a lot of breeders believe, I'm not sure, like I haven't seen research on this, but a lot of people um, say from experience that they like to have their does bred their first time at, like if it's a small doe at six months or a large doe at eight months because they believe that that um, makes easier births by like loosening up the birth canal throughout the lifetime of the rabbit, so it takes more. Uh, I think that will just have to be like personal experience for you, so talk to breeders that breed your same breed or um, just experiment yourself. Um, large bucks usually come into sexual maturity at six to nine months. Um, generally, once the testicles of the male drop, that's a good indicator that like he can breed and it doesn't really matter as much for bucks if you decide to breed them early because they're not actually having to put energy into raising the kids and growing the kids. It's more in the doe. So I would not breed a younger doe or a smaller doe at any younger than six months. And I would not breed a large doe at any younger than eight months. And also just use your discretion. If you don't feel like the doe is really has an overall large body frame yet and isn't ready don't push that six months like a month isn't really going to make that much of a difference in rectos retrospects the most important thing you're wanting to look for here is can this doe handle a litter and if it can't you might have issues with being able to feed the babies properly or birthing the baby so just be responsible and smart if you're going to be breeding and do what's best for the animal overall at the end you're always going to be able to get more rabbits but um, a hard pregnancy is sometimes something that can be very devastating for the rabbit and for you. So these are my references that I used. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation today. Let's give a round of applause. We're still recording because I want to see if there's any questions or comments. Okay. I guess I have a couple questions. Um, how long is a doe pregnant, the, like the length of gestation? It is... Um, 28 to 32 days, okay. they generally say like 30. The larger doe will sometimes even go up to 34. Okay. But generally, if your babies are born between 28 to 34 days, I wouldn't have any worries even if it's a small doe. Okay, and then how many, on average, how many fetuses do they have? And then tell me a range that you've experienced, you know, low to high and then the average. Um, I think that, so a smaller doe, generally has about anywhere between four to six. I one time had, um, I raised tall and lofts for a long time, which they're generally about like a four pound rabbit. So they're on the smaller side. And I had a haul and loft rabbit that had a litter of eight babies. And it actually ended up being kind of bad because there was um, a lot of the babies didn't fully develop in the womb because they um, didn't no have space. enough room. So there was like babies born without limbs and stuff like that. Which, like, for rabbits, having, like, the proper amount of limbs can be pretty, like, important and stuff like that. 
because they literally like their back feet like that's how they used to get around so sure. some of those babies like there were some that were missing like more than two like mm -hmm. i just went ahead and like you mainly euthanized right. when they were um young just because i didn't want to have to raise rabbits that would struggle like that throughout their life so you know a two large litter size can't be a problem but what a champ of a doe to be able to carry that many babies um, your larger breed rabbits will have anywhere between, so my larger breed, the breed I raised was English Lops. They generally range between 10 to 16 pounds. Um, they, I had a litter as small as six ones, and I had up to, I think, 12 in one litter. Okay, once. someplace in there, okay. So eight is kind of like the average. Right. Rhythm. Now, another thing I, I wanted to know when I was watching this, you know, like, for example, some animals are seasonal, like horses are seasonal. They're called long day breeders. I can't remember ever learning about rabbits if they're seasonal or not. So Anything? rabbits are technically like, um, since they can be induced ovulation, they breed all year round. But for the males, um, generally, how it's controlled more, why you don't see baby rabbits in the winter, is um, the the males don't produce sperm like they normally would in very hot temperatures and very cold temperatures. Okay they can actually like contract their um, testicles up into their body to keep them warm and also when they're fighting. So just any situation where their testicles are in danger, they can contract them up into their body, but they won't breed as well during then. And also when like the temperature hits about like 80 degrees and you're trying to breed your rabbit, um, the males just won't produce as well. So generally if you're trying to breed during the summer, sometimes moving your males that you're using as breeding stock into the AC, Okay. So that you don't have any lack in that, but that's kind of why you see the majority of baby bunnies in the wild being born in like fall and um, springtime. Okay. And then I know you mentioned about it was early in this in the presentation you talked about like how lab rabbits you can go and get information on how to raise those. And I was just going to say, yeah, anything that's done at like Eli Lilly or Purdue or any company, or any big places like that. There's rules to follow mm -hmm. with number of square feet per doe or you know, buck mm -hmm. and uh, how you feed them and the photo period. It's very controlled, especially if, mm -hmm. you know, if you're at some of these places because you know, I know Purdue has an animal care use committee that has to yeah. approve any animal experiment. And then I'm sure Eli Lilly has their own in-house people because, you know. The how, how federal is one is IPAC, and so it's Institutional Animal Use and Care Committee Produces pay cut, so it's Purdue yeah. University Animal Care and Use Committee. Yeah. So there are these guidelines if somebody's you know trying to figure out how to start. At least you have some pretty good guidelines. Uh, I have one question regarding uh, if there was any complications with pregnancy other than the deformity you're talking about before, uh, more on the actual mother's end. Uh, so I believe sell dogs that haven't been able to give birth to all their babies because they didn't have the strength to keep on pushing uh, or have died during pregnancy. This is in canines. Uh, have you had any similar issues with anything like that? Uh, what would you do if like a baby is stuck, uh, stuck in the uh, uterus? So generally, um, I've never had some stuck internally, but I've had, um, I've, well, like if they sometimes get stuck in the birthing canal, sometimes you can help like pull them. But generally, like rabbits, you won't, it's very rare to actually catch them have, in the act of having babies. Because mm. generally, um, like they'll do it, they're very, I've seen it, I've raised rabbits for a long time and I only saw one live birth in the entire time <laughs> that I wow. raised them. That's amazing. And How like, big would you say they are just with your hands or something like that? Um, they're about this big, so probably like. Is that fingertip to fingertip? Or fingertip is that... to fingertip, so that's gotcha. probably like. So the size of a small mouse, maybe? Yeah, birth? probably like the size of a small mouse. And um, they're born hairless with closed eyes. They kind of look like naked mole rats, so they're not terribly cute. Like two weeks and like one week old is like the cutest ever, but like right when they're born, <laughs> kind of look like Because yeah, that's a very baby. short gestation length, right? I mean, 30 mm -hmm. days, that, yeah. that's crazy. They, um, I forgot what I was going to say, but and then I had one more question, because are they nocturnal? Are, are rabbits um, nocturnal, more active at night than daytime? Dawn and dusk. Is oh, the most active. they're active at dawn and dusk, and I cannot remember the name of that. Anybody in the audience? There is a name. I learned this too. It was an insane word. I couldn't pronounce it. 
Is it crepuscular? Crepuscular? That sounds right. Maybe I, I can write that uh, down. It's Isn't it C-R-E? Crepuscular, yeah. Cre okay, crepuscular? Cre yeah, C-R-E-P. C-R-E, yeah, crepuscular. Okay, good, we got it recorded. Yes. I had um, one rabbit born one time that had sometimes, they have like rabbits that are born, they have like these dwarf genes and these like,